and welcome to my channel. My name is Anthony Gamer and welcome to Classic Gamer 74. On this channel I cover everything gaming, a little bit of music, a little bit of wrestling and all kinds of fun stuff. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, let us know by liking and subscribing to our channel. It would mean the world to us. With that said, the arcade is now open. In my previous episode I had discussed games for the ColecoVision. Now, if many of you have never been here before, uh, the ColecoVision was one of the big three popular game systems during what's called the classic era of gaming, that being the late 70s into the mid 80s. Uh, the other two were the Atari 2600 and the Intellivision. The ColecoVision had a short shelf life, but during that time it had some amazing games, many of which are highly collectible to this day. In my previous episode, I discussed rare and valuable ColecoVision games that started at $50 loose, and we're going to continue on from there. A quick disclaimer, uh, the prices that I'm going to be quoting are current as of June 2022. Prices are liable to go up and down without notice, so if you purchase something and it goes down in price, uh, don't blame me. Uh, like I said, this video is being filmed uh, in mid-June 2022, so depending on what time or when you look at this video, prices have probably changed. Uh, remember to be careful and cautious when purchasing from people online, and if a price seems too good to be true, it probably is. So, without further ado, let's get into the games. And our first game for today is Fireman. This was released in 2002 by Good Time Games. This is a homebrew, as some of the games on these lists are going to be homebrews, as well as commercially released games from back during the life of the ColecoVision, just to let you know. In this game, you take on the role of a fireman, and you are trying to protect this building from going up in flames. Uh, you can get extinguishers from your truck, or you can hook up hoses to the various uh, spigots throughout the uh, building, and try to put the fires out. Uh, easier said than done as they spread pretty quickly and some of those flames are kind of hard to get to. Overall, it's a fun game and surprisingly addictive. If you'd like to add this game to your collection, look to spend around $61. And next up we have Porky's. Yeah, I know what some of you are thinking. Was this a prototype? And yes, it was. However, it was released on cart later on. Um, I think unofficially, of course. But uh, for those of you not familiar with the film or with the video game Porky's, let me re um, I will summarize it real quickly. Porky's is a coming-of-age movie. Um about some young men in Florida in the 50s. In the game, you are trying to blow up this uh, bar called Porky's because the owner of the place, Porky, severely hurt one of your friends. And you take on the role of Pee Wee Morris, who is one of the characters from the film. You're trying to collect items, sneak through the girl's shower room um, with some items, get to Porky's, and blow it up. Uh, this is the unreleased prototype that was going to be released for ColecoVision before 20th Century Fox games got out of the gaming industry. If you are label, able to lay your hands on a copy of this, expect to play, pay for pay around $65. Next up we have Juno First from 1983 by Konami. Uh, what you're looking at here is the original arcade version as I was unable to locate a ROM for this title. Pretty cool space shooter with those awesome almost kind of vector graphics. I'd say it's kind of a transition but anyway a really fun game. Uh, the homebrew cart's a little bit on the expensive side if you're wanting to add this game to your collection. Look to spend around $65 for a loose cart. And next up we have Rollerball. Now this is unfortunately another one of those games I do not have the ROM for. Uh, it looks like this was going to be a video game version of a pinball machine. Uh, here is a look at the box for this game. Uh, here is a screenshot of that homebrew. Looks kind of like a uh, video pinball or one of those other uh, pinball games made into a video game. Looks pretty cool. I'd sure like to play it myself. If you'd like to add it to your collection, look to spend around $65. Alright, and next up we have Sector Alpha. 
from SpectraVision from 1983. In this game, you are trying to fend off alien invaders, so it's kind of like a combination of Space Invaders and Missile Command, but from a first-person perspective. Oh, the controls on this are wonky as heck, but honestly, if you're a collector, this is one you're going to want to have to get a hold of. To add it to your collection, be ready to spend about $66. All right, and next up we have Mappy, that great platformer game that was only officially ported out a couple times. Uh, if you are a longtime viewer of my channel, you probably know that I am a big supporter of John Champeau, who made a amazing port of this game for the Atari 2600. Well, here is a port for the ColecoVision. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with this game. You are the mouse Mappy and you are trying to recover stolen goods and go against the bad cat gang. Uh, this platformer is going to run you a little bit of money if you would like to purchase it. Be ready to spend about $67 to add this to your ColecoVision collection. When I think of Yara Kung Fu, I think of that amazing arcade game and the absolute best port of it being for the Commodore 64. It's a great fighting game, uh, way ahead of its time. Really have a lot of happy memories playing it. I wasn't all that good at it. Oh, okay, I did beat Blues a couple times, but regardless, uh, what you're looking at here is uh, actually not that version of it. This is kind of based on the NES version of the same game. Not as much fun as the original, but, you know, it's still not that bad. You know, I really have a special place in my heart for uh, fighting games. This homebrew of that game is going to set you back a little bit though. Uh, in order to purchase this, be ready to spend around $73. Alright, next up we have Sammy Lightfoot from Sierra Online. Uh, this is one of those games uh, which is giving you proof why Sierra should have stuck with the quest games. Ugh, I, don't, I don't know what the hell's going on in this game. Uh, really, I don't. Um, anyway, if you'd like to add this to your collection, this is going to cost you a little bit. This game will run you around $84 in loose cart. Alright, and next up we have Tank Wars. Now, this is not to be confused with that really awesome PC strategy game. This one's a whole lot of fun, too. Probably one of my favorites on the list. In this one, you're rolling around in a tank in a maze and trying to blast the other guy. Pretty self-explanatory, but hours and hours of endless fun, I tell you what. If you'd like to get this game, be ready to spend around $89 for a loose cart. Next up, we have Boulder Dash. Now, this game has been ported out to just about every computer system, game system known to man. And why? Because the game is a whole lot of fun and there's nothing else like it. Now, if you are one of the few people on this planet that have never played Boulder Dash, I'll summarize it real quickly. You are digging underground, and you are trying to grab the jewels, and you are trying not to get squished by these boulders when you dig underneath them. The game can be high-paced. It's a whole lot of fun and very addictive. I'll tell you, it, there, <laughs> this is just one of those classic games, I tell you, that really has earned its reputation. However, other versions of this game are a little bit on the cheaper side, but if you really would like to add this to your collection, be ready to spend about $96. And we go from one legendary game to another. This is Gauntlet. Now, many of you have probably heard of this game. It's been ported out to just about every game system, computer system out there, and for about the same reason. The game is just awesome and a whole lot of fun. Uh, this was actually uh, created by Team Pixel Boy and it was based on the original arcade game that was released for Atari. It's a dungeon crawling game and you gotta really keep on your toes and be ready to fight all those monsters that come after you while you are trying to get as much treasure as possible. Uh, the ColecoVision version here is gonna set you back a little bit as it usually will run you right around $98. Okay, and next up we have another legend, and this is Moon Patrol. Now, this is another one of those classic arcade games that was not released during the actual life of the ColecoVision, so it was created later on. And as a homebrew, it's a little bit on the valuable side. Now, if you're not familiar with Moon Patrol, okay. But anyway, in this game, you are 
going around the moon, jumping over craters, shooting enemies. It's a whole lot of fun. It's actually one of the first games in the arcade that I got the top score for. Yay me. Anyway, if you'd like to add uh, this homebrew version of this game to your collection, be ready to spend about $98. Let's face it, Qbert was one of the greatest arcade games of all time. It definitely was a game that I know several of us probably broke our piggy banks just going and playing, and when it was ported out to various game systems, computer systems, all of us were happy. Well, the second game, Qbert's Cubes, wasn't as big of a hit as the original, although it was a pretty cool game depending on where you played it. The arcade version was really cool. Uh, the, even the ColecoVision version you're looking at here was cool. The Atari 2600, in not so much. Anyway, uh, in this game you are changing blocks, but this time you're doing it by depending on the direction that you jump. So you're trying to match them all up. Of course, you have enemies that are trying to stop you. Um, this game was ported out towards the end of the life of Parker Brothers' entry into the video game world. So it was a little hard to get a hold of. If you'd like to add this to your collection, be ready to spend around $99. Next up, do you remember the TV show Power Lords? How about the toys? No? Well, don't feel bad because nobody really does. If it wasn't for the fact that they had some games that had been planned, probably nobody would even remember them at all. Um, during the early 80s, uh, He-Man was the big thing, as well as Star Wars and other kind of cool fantasy sci-fi things, so this was an example of a big toy company trying to cash in on that craze and it didn't work uh out of all they did have high hopes for it though as they were planning on making games for just about every game system out there uh the only version i think that actually got released was for the atari 2600 though uh so you were looking at somebody who released the homebrew version of this prototype and actually the game's not half bad if you'd like to add this game to your collection, though, be ready to spend right around $100 for it. And our final game for today is Flappy Bird. Now, versions of this have been made for just about every game system, computer system out there. Uh, a lot of people have enjoyed this game. It's fun to play. It's not exactly easy, either that or I'm just terrible at it. Uh, this was released in January 2014 by Collector Vision. If you'd like to add this particular version of this game to your collection, be ready to spend around $101. And our next episode will wrap up our series on rare and valuable ColecoVision games. Well, that brings us to the end of another exciting episode of Classic Gamer 74. I really hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, let me know by smashing that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to click that little bell icon down there so you'll be notified when I upload new episodes. And please follow me on all my social media platforms. You'll find the links in the descriptions below. Well, until next time, I am Anthony Gamer, wishing you a great week. Until then, be strong, be safe, be happy, be healthy, and above all, take care of each other, be kind to each other, and stop hate of all kinds. See you guys next time. Until then, the arcade is closed. Bye, everyone. See you next time.